faking that? No, he's not. It looks like one of the guys just fainted. He's the 65-year-old ex-army bloke who said he hasn't been eating. Very dad's army. The war's over for him. Up and down the UK, on weekends and bank holidays, self-proclaimed history buffs arm themselves, head to the woods, and pretend to be soldiers of Hitler's Reich. It's a chance for middle-aged men to escape lawnmower duties and to live out their fantasies. It just so happens that their fantasies involve dressing up as the embodiment of all evil. To them, it's just a bit of a laugh. But across much of the reenactment community, this sort of thing is largely banned. In a culture as unforgivingly easy to offend as ours, a lot of people wouldn't be up for dressing as history's most reviled monsters. Our guide was Nick Ronan, a 22-year-old reenactor that we met on a forum. Should be a good weekend. He'd been kind enough to invite me to Fallen Eagle to join in a World War II reenactment in a field in Oxfordshire. Fucking hell. Because I wanted to keep my job, I declined to go Nazi and asked if I could play one of the bad guys instead, an American GI. See you in hell, you Nazi fuck. But is this really a sinister pastime? Or is it just cosplay with a few more swastikas? How are you? Good mate. Paul, pleased to meet you. How, How are you doing? doing? Yeah, I'm good, right. mate. How are you? So, you coming for a weekend to reenact? Yes, I'm come to reenact. Okay. Where are we off to now? I'm going to give you some some equipment. Okay. Uh, for the weekend. Good. Uh, you're going to be portraying a GI, uh, American uh, leader. Right. So, uh, I've got an helmet for you. Just want to just pop that on your head. Okay. See if it fits. There you go. Thank you. So if you want to put anything in this, like your food or anything, okay, I'll show you how this goes on your mm -hmm. equipment as well. Okay. Okay. Sweet. Right, so let's, let's move on then. All right. So where are we going now? All right, we're now going to go to uh, the, the trench system. Yeah. By the way, we're now approaching Adolf Hitler Straße. Yeah. I named the street off the back in Berlin, mm. uh, obviously where the third right was, just to make it, excuse me, make it feel a little bit more like home. Uh, we'll go to the Unterschlumpf, which means bunker. Okay. Okay. okay so this this is uh, one of the uh, one of the guys uh, just helping out. So, all uh, right. If you want to come in, uh, we've got a partial uh, ops table uh, set up. Obviously, with a radio, uh, maps, and things. Uh, they're just like fire lighters, so you, you should burn oh, them. Oh, these are. I thought yeah. they might be period sweets or something. Uh, no, if, if you want if you want to try one, uh, feel, <laughs> feel, feel free. Cool. Uh, that it? Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Cool. All right. All right, Nick. Hi. How you doing? Not too Jones. bad. Mate, nice. So how did you get into this? It started years ago. I started doing the scale modelling, all the airfix kits, stuff like that. And a couple of mates I did that with um, said I would do the airsoft, the World War II airsoft stuff. It's just great fun. I still do that. But I wanted something a bit more realistic, a bit more heavy on, um, on standards and make sure you've got the right kit for the right time frame. I don't collect the other side, the, the allied stuff like that. It's um, purely the German interest for me. So what's your day job? Uh, what I do is I'm a project engineer um, with a software company. Do your colleagues know about your oh, yeah. interest? I, I do, uh, yeah, I get a lot of stick for it. Um, but What do they say? They just take the mate. There's, um, there's a couple of photos of me up at events that have got stuck on doors and stuff like that. All, all in good jest. I mean, do you think it's not a weird thing, but do you think it's like an unconventional thing for like a young person to be interested in? Definitely. I mean, kids my age are much more interested in Xbox and football, whereas I sort of grew up playing soldiers in the woods running around with a stick, and this is really an extension of that. I think half the reason that they're even letting us do this is because they're so sure that they're not Nazis. I feel like if they were Nazis, then they would be like, absolutely fucking not. But because I feel like they're kind of so strongly in the reenactment vibe and not in the I'm a fucking Nazi vibe, um, I think they're kind of more comfortable with it and more comfortable with being filmed. I don't think I'm in the Fuhrer bunker. I think I'm just in the reenactment bunker. I felt like the rest of the squad were going to take their living history very seriously. I needed a character to blend in. You know, I don't want to be like bolshy American guy. I feel like that's like a played out character. You see that all the time. Maybe he's got dad's got a butcher's business that he wants to go back to. He wants to inherit the butchery. My dad's gonna give me the butchers. Maybe he was like a like a failed actor. He wanted to be on the stage. Oddly enough, some guys outside are already in character. So I'm gonna go and see what their deal is. Hi mate. Hi, yeah. Joe. Hi, right, Joe. Matt. Nice to meet you. How you doing? Uh, not too bad. A bit cold. Yeah. Yeah. Did you have much interest in history before you started this? Yes, before I started this hobby, I thought I knew quite a lot about 
well, the Second World War and sort of the politics that led up to it. I also see parallels with like the modern, the modern way the media does things and the modern way government does things. Mm. But the people who pay the price are the soldiers on the ground that are bleeding and dying. Do you see German soldiers as kind of cogs in a, in a larger machine? Oh yeah, very much so. I think uh, you know, people join the army because they want to serve the nation and they, they want to make the world a better place. Do you think that even extends to the Waffen SS? People look at these days and go, oh, oh the SS, they're terrible, it's an outlawed, an outlawed organisation. The Russians wanted to outlaw the entire German armed forces. So they picked the Waffen SS as the scapegoat. But from my understanding of the SS, it was it was not really so much about that. It was it was more about becoming part of an elite, sort of a racially elite group. Well, you say that. I've met veterans of the SS who spent six weeks in the SS and three years in a prison. When they weren't locked up, the Waffen SS were the supposedly racially elite armed branch who served as soldiers in the war alongside the German army. One division, known as Das Reich, is responsible for the massacre in the French village of Orador sur Glen, in which 642 civilians were murdered. Das Reich are one of the groups represented here at Fallen Eagle, and we spotted one of the members outside their cabin. All right, Joe. Right. Steve. How you doing? All right, thank you. Which group are you part of then? We're the second panzer division of the Das Reich. Das Reich? Yeah. Is that a good one? Yeah, love it to bits. Is it the best? Best group going. How did you get into into the reenactment? Two years thing? ago, I went to a show and I fell in love with it. Then my son joined it, and uh, he was wearing his uniform. I fell in love. When I saw this, I was like, "What on earth are you doing in that?" He said, "I've joined the Das Reich." I said, "I've got to join. I want to join as well." So, what is is Das Reich? We were the first ones in at Stalingrad. We were the best army unit in the Second World War. They were they were a cracking regiment. Some people do look down on the SS, but they weren't that bad. They weren't that bad. What, what do you think the best thing about the SS was? <sighs> Difficult question, because there's that many F SS groups, uh, regiments. But uh, I just know the Das Reich. There's a lot of things I can talk about Das Reich, but I don't want to, because they were very, very efficient and very ugly in their ways of doing things. But they ask you questions like, why, why do you want to be in the SS as a German? Well, somebody's got to do it. That's my question. Somebody's got to do it. You know, you just can't be British or American or Italian or Russian. Do your friends or family ever sort of say, no, they, say anything um, negative about this? I did have a... Uh, I was outside waiting for my son to bring me here today, this morning, from my house, and I had all my stuff outside waiting for him to come round to pick it all up. And somebody went by and saw my uniform hanging up on one of my hanging baskets. And he come over and he looked at his and he went, SS! And he, and he walked off in disgust. But you, you get that, you get that, and you just don't take any notice of it. Do you understand why people might have that reaction? Oh, yeah, I understand what the, uh, you know, you understand. But they've got to understand they wasn't in the Second World War. So they don't understand what the Second World War, that's what we're there for, to, to teach them what it was like in the Second World War. So do you have previous military experience? Yeah, I was in the 1st Battalion Royal Green Jackets for 16 years, and most of our group were in the regular army anyway. Yeah, I loved the army, and it was nice to, to wear another uniform again. One of the things about dressing up as a Nazi is that you're gonna have a whole host of excuses to justify it. And there's also the element of, you know, I wanna play. It's playtime, basically. It's like, I wanna be acting as someone. I want to be pretending as someone. It's just a very oddly specific thing to want to pretend to be. Tomorrow, when I see them in action, you know, got their rifles and they've got their positions and they're acting out battles, maybe it will take on a different memo and maybe I'll understand it a bit more in that way. But for now, it's profoundly strange, but I think it's the isolation in a cabin surrounded by dudes in Nazi uniforms. It was time to suit up for war. My role in the reenactment was an American GI, heroically assisting Russian partisans. My teammates, who wanted to be Nazis but drew the short straw, begrudgingly let me join their ranks. Before the main fight started, I needed to go and warm them up, 
as I had a feeling they definitely hated me. How do I look? Got fucking Justin Bieber's shoes on right now. Got my bullets in my bag. Um, is this a handbag? It's kind of like a shuttle bag. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna sell NOS out of this later. Does anyone want NOS? Balloons? Hi. Hello, teammate. Hi. How are you doing? Doing good. Looking forward to the battle? Yep. Yeah? What's our plan? We've got a couple of really good dense... dense parts of the the surrounding area where we're just going to sit and let them go by. Well, we've got the element of surprise. We're going to be, we've done a good recce. David's done this before. He knows it like the back of his hand. In terms of my role, am I on a sort of seen and not heard thing or maybe not seen, not heard? We're all, we're all on that. We're all under Commander David. He's the commander and he will be giving us all instructions. I'll, I will, probably won't take my eyes off him. I really hope I don't fuck it up. That's fine, because uh, I am a Russian. I'll slit your throat at the end. <laughs> <laughs> no, think, um... no it'll, it'll be fine. This is another, uh, this is one of our partisans. And of course, this is, these are going to be our leaders and we'll be assigned to one of them. Okay. I'm going to go and uh, get my gun. I've got to make sure. I'll Rifle, with... sorry. I'll yeah. come with you and I want to make sure that you're uh, compassmentous with it. Okay, cool. All right. And don't put a finger on the trigger. Um, so, you're, you're in a position and you're just waiting for the dudes to come along. 30 metres. Yeah. Hit your target. Yeah. Well, that's too close, isn't it? Guys, can you get out of this? If you want to get involved, you run it. Otherwise, get out. Go away, please. Hi. Yeah. And don't give me a look like that. This is... This is... on me because I want to make sure I'm in charge of him when you're not about. And I want to make sure that he's compassmentous with it. Right, Thank fine. you. Doesn't matter, I'm off. No, no, no. Fine, stand, stand it. Mate, I don't like someone hanging around on my shoulder and getting over-involved if, if I've been told that... Okay, no, if I've been no. told that you're supervising... Believe it. If I've been told that you're supervising and someone bothered to tell me it was you... Fuck you. What happened there? Uh, dicks getting involved when they fucking shouldn't. So the battle's about to begin. The Germans are heading off to the trenches. Uh, me and the partisans are going to go and find a tree to hide in. Spring 1944. Hitler's on the back heel. The Germans are being pushed back through Russia by the Red Army. A plucky young GI has found himself fighting the Hun with a ragtag group of Russian partisans. The mission? To ambush an SS patrol and infiltrate their trench system. America and Russia must pull together to deliver this final crushing blow to the Jerrys and free the world of this Nazi menace. Might sit against the wall. It's been like half an hour and uh, nothing much has happened. I think the Nazis are probably having a laugh, having a good SS laugh. Our objective for this scenario is to defend this position. This is where we're based. We know that there's partisans operating in the area. We'll send out patrols, see what they can and can't do. Charlie, peace. I'm wasting a nice spring day by uh, dressing up like a dickhead. What we're going to do now is conduct a small sort of little patrol, see if we can identify any buildings, any trenches, anything the partisans could use against us, where weak points might be in our defence, what we can use to our advantage. Have you got a character? Get any... No, any you don't. Position down there, you want to take up your position there. Boom! Go and kill some parties there. Positioning that one, firing out. This one here. 
the shirt. As soon as I hear a shot, I'm gonna go into the greenery. I'm gonna lie down for a bit. Yes, I fucking got one. Fucking shot one of them. I can't believe my fucking gun has jammed after the first shot. Finally, Jesus Christ. Looks like I'm not gonna make it to Broadway. <laughs> why, Steve? Why? Why? When am I supposed to get up? Jesus, looks like we killed the whole Nazi patrol. Dead. We're dead and dead. We're actually fucking dead. Oh, God. <laughs> Nick, what happened, mate? Um, basically, we come up here. We took um, contact from the building. So what we do is we split the zug. Um, split, the split the section. We've got a couple of guys go around there. And the rest of us come up as a flank and move up, up to the woods there. But as we got to that tree, uh, we were fired on from behind. So we didn't clear, clear the rear. And um, yeah, we got wiped out. Well, there's probably the friendliest Nazis I've ever met in my life. When the camera stopped rolling, Nick told me in no uncertain terms that he and the crew had a problem with me calling them Nazis. He said I shouldn't use the N-word, despite me, of course, referring to who they were reenacting and not their political views. I wanted to address this issue before I left the Oxfordshire branch of the Third Reich behind. Earlier on, I said, you know, what, well, this is the friendliest bunch of Nazis I've ever met. And you took, you know, offence to that. Yeah, um, because uh, none of this is political. None of us are here because we believe in, in the political ideologies of the 30s and the Third Reich and that. Would you ever join like, a, like an SS unit like Das Reich? Um, das Reich, good group, but SS isn't, isn't my interest. I, I do like the Heer, which is German army and, and the Luftwaffe. They're my two interests. So there's no like ideological opposition to joining an SS unit? <sighs> not, certainly not for me. I mean, there's, they obviously committed crimes and stuff like that. Uh, this is a bit, so I didn't want to go down this route. Can we, uh, Santa, can we, can we forget all the the, the political ideology and all that, leave that out. Okay, um, um, if you could have one message to um, people on the outside world who maybe don't understand what you're trying to do here and maybe look upon it in a negative way, what would be the message that you'd want to impart to them? If anyone's sort of, because obviously the symbols and stuff we, and the uniforms we carry do carry those connotations with them and quite greatly so we should never forget what was done under that name but come and talk to us and you'll soon quickly realise that that's not what we're about at all did someone just call your name i believe so i okay. believe i'll need it should we wrap it up i think we should great to meet you excellent no problem been a pleasure to meet you i hope you've enjoyed it yeah we've had a great time excellent yeah yeah excellent cheers Lovely. guys cheers mate right so we've come to the end of the day um, the hog roast is being prepared as we speak. Um, I've shot at people, I've been shot at, and I can't deny that there is, uh, there's a certain thrill to it, even if most of the day is just fucking sitting behind trees and waiting for things to happen. And I can see why Nick is into it, but that doesn't make wearing SS uniforms and Nazi uniforms okay. And when we just spoke to Nick right now, he didn't want to talk about the political side of it, but it's always political when you're wearing a swastika. And in every language, that means the same thing.
but maybe that's the prize we get for victory. The privilege of pissing around in a forest dressed as a genocidal murderer. Ugh. No, I don't think um, reenactments for me. There's too much like painful period shoes. Um, there's too much waiting around. There's not enough killing Nazis.